And one more image that we have to bring into play as our Lord goes up on the mountain to teach is the image of Solomon. Solomon, too, was a great teacher. He was a teacher of wisdom. From Solomon comes our wisdom literature. He was the fountainhead of what we call the wisdom literature. And Solomon went up on uh, Mount Zion, and from Mount Zion, he taught wisdom to the nations. Okay, so the nations came, they lined up to hear him, maybe they took a number, <laughs> these little number tickers, okay, waiting to hear, uh, hear Solomon's wisdom. This is 1 Kings 4, his throne was on Mount Zion. I'll put some passages in here. And if we went back to 1 Kings 4 and looked carefully, as we got near the end of the chapter, we would read that uh, Solomon taught the people, and uh, he wrote uh, 3,000 proverbs, okay? 3,000 proverbs of wisdom. Now, the word for proverb in Hebrew is mashal. In Greek, it is translated as parabole, okay? From which we get parables, okay? So King Solomon taught 3,000 parables. And oh, you know, lights should be going off in our heads because our Lord is noticed for his habit of teaching in parables, so much so that the disciples come to him and say, why do you always teach in parabole? Okay? Well, one of the reasons why our Lord teaches in parabole is because he's come to fulfill these types and images of the Old Testament. He is the greater son of David. He is the better teacher than Solomon. One greater than Solomon is here. So our Lord teaches in better parabolas. Okay? What is a mashal in Hebrew or a parabole? We tend to think of, well, it's a story with maybe an allegorical meaning or something like that, but the concept is broader than that. It's uh, teaching via literary devices. Okay? Teaching via all kinds of wordplay, metaphors, similes, analogies, okay, uh, short stories, allegories. Any kind of teaching through wordplay was a parabole or a mashal. Okay? So our Lord is coming now, and he teaches in parabole. He teaches in, in figures of speech and images, much like Solomon. But the content of much of what he's teaching is a correction of Moses. Our Lord is the new son of David. He is the one uh, greater than Solomon who's come to restore the kingdom. And our Lord is also the one who's come to build the temple. You know, Solomon was a great temple builder. And as we're going to see in the Sermon on the Mount, there are going to be temple images, strikingly, uh, throughout the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is telling us how to go up to the heavenly temple. Okay? In fact, in a sense, how to be part of the heavenly temple. So all of these images are in play.